and now we're going to talk about what are the obstacles to a moral engagement. We have seen, uh, laid the foundations of uh, uh, our enterprise with uh, in the moral domain. Now we are trying to find out that what, before we begin full swing, that what are the objections or obstacles that one faces before a moral engagement. Now, the first uh, obstacle that we face is moral relativism. As written on the board, there are two basic uh, obstacles or most common obstacles to moral engagement, uh, which are uh, moral relativism and egoism. Now, let me briefly tell you what is uh, moral relativism. Now, moral relativism is exemplified by the frequently uh, quoted adage that you come across that that is uh, your life and your values and this is my life and my values and therefore I will not no, I will not sit on judgment upon your values and you cannot sit on judgment upon my values. Now that our moral frames of reference are different and there can be no hierarchy among these moral frames of reference or moral uh, points of origin, right? That you come from a different culture and I come from a different culture and Therefore, we both cannot, uh, there is no basis for us to have a dialogue. Now, this is quite a prevalent uh, um, attitude, which is exemplified again by the claims that, well, I am not judgmental, not being judgmental, so not making moral judgments upon another uh, uh, culture or another individual or another domain. So, let me briefly put it as that the frame uh, that uh, moral relativism is talking about not making a hierarchy between frames of moral reference. Now, when I say that we do not make a hierarchy amongst the moral frame of reference, what I am saying is that, well, one uh, uh, moral domain cannot sit in judgment of another moral domain. So, this comes out to mean that this is your life and you decide what you do, this is uh, my life and I decide what to do. Now, this is quite a uh, 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 common attitude that we see. Does it actually stand for relativism? Now, let us see. Now, if I were a relativist, a moral relativist or an ethical relativist, I would not be able to sit on judgment on your act uh, moral actions. And likewise, you would not be able to sit on my, uh, on judgment on my moral actions. But now, is that really the case that we do not judge each other or is there something more to it? Now, this uh, we would all like to call ourselves uh, uh, relativists, if this uh, shows an attitude of uh, uh, humility about knowledge and openness and being non-dogmatic about uh, value claims. But well, let us see. Let us see what do we mean by uh, moral uh, relativists claim. Now, the relativist claim is that, well, I cannot judge your actions. That means, whatever you do is beyond my judgment. But do we actually mean by that, uh, be, mean by when we say that we are not judgmental that or do we mean something called tolerance? That is, we see, when I claim that I am not sitting in judgment over your actions, do I perhaps actually mean that I am tolerant of your value system? Where, uh, for if I were a relativist, then no matter what you do, say an individual is mercilessly quashing uh, a little puppy on the main uh, road, a relativist, well, would say that that is his uh, 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 decision and that is his values which he is executing. A, toler uh, a person with tolerance would make a judgment, would say that, well, it is wrong for that person to uh, trouble the puppy this way. And perhaps, uh, when the threshold of tolerance breaks and he says, that he sees that the puppy is being uh, tortured too much, 
and that too in an unprovoked uh, uh, stimuli, then he would perhaps step in and uh, uh, stop the uh, chap from torturing the puppy. Now, the second is an, uh, case is an example of somebody who exhibits tolerance, although we would uh, commonly believe that the second is also an example of relativism. It is not an example of relativism. Now, uh, the opposite of relativism is absolutism or having a, or being a fundamentalist about values. Now, the moment we say a fundamentalist about values, our connotations are of somebody who is dogmatic, rigid, unkind and perhaps wicked or evil, maybe even a terrorist. But that is just a connotation of fundamentalist. The denotation of a fundamentalist or an absolutist is that one who is open that there can be some transcultural values. That even Mahatma Gandhi is a fundamentalist for that reason, because if he holds that non-violence is a transcultural value, no matter what, then Mahatma Gandhi is an absolutist. The Amnesty International, which uh, uh, works for human rights world over is a fundamentalist organization because it believes human rights are applicable all over uh, the world to all peoples at all times. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is again a fundamentalist absolutist claim. So, you would see uh, a moral relativist on the other hand cannot make any judgments at all. So, even the act of uh, uh, in a culture where newborn babies are uh, uh, mercilessly slaughtered because of their gender can also not be judged by the moral relativist. So, coming to the absolutist, now we see the absolutist actually does have some stands, the moral relativist can have no stand. So, the first uh, uh, obstacle that we face to moral relativism, uh, uh, to the moral engagement is moral relativist. Now, somebody who calls himself a relativist cannot have a dialogue about morality, because for him simply that uh, uh, just as apples and oranges cannot be compared unless until you have a common domain of fruits. So, you cannot compare different value systems, because each value system belongs to each domain it comes from. There is nothing to converse about, because there is no common truth or no common ground to arrive at. Now, let us reconsider ourselves. Are we people who are uh, tolerant or are we relativists? Perhaps most of us would claim, would uh, claim to belong to the domain of to uh, tolerant uh, people rather than relativist. So, as we see that uh, uh, relativism is, uh, gives us a hue of uh, uh, intellectual humility and non-dogmatic approach, but it is not so actually. In fact, uh, tolerance is uh, what we perhaps more accurately mean uh, or to target uh, when we say that we are uh, humble or about our uh, moral or value claims, that they are fallible. So, being fallible is not the same thing as being a relativist. So, uh, one must clear one's uh, 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 theoretical standpoint, that whether one is a fallibilist or a moral relativist. Now, who is a fallibilist? A fallibilist is one who has one's own uh, value claims, but thinks that it is fallible, that well it can be wrong, but a relativist is different. A relativist could think that he is wrong, but he would find no other way of correcting himself, because well there is uh, uh, no absolute transcultural value to arrive at. So, if you are a relativist, the moral engagement does not take off, for we, as we see that there is uh, uh, simply no reason for uh, engaging morally, because there is no common ground to arrive at. But as we have shown that, uh, uh, perhaps we all sit in judgment of the other, and uh, we all sit in judgment of the other, and then we see, we, we refrain from taking an action to a large extent, but we are constantly judging uh, uh, one another. So, this way uh, a moral relativist has no possibility of engaging in a moral discourse, whereas if you are open to the idea that there can be, not that there is, but that there can be one single transcultural value, you are an absolutist. So, as we see that relativism, it does not hold ground, because we are constantly engaging in uh, judging what is a better value, in refining our values, we are fallibilist at the most. And, uh, uh, curious at the least, but we 
perhaps are not relativists. Now, let me talk about the other uh, dilemma or the other obstacle that the uh, moral uh, engagement uh, proceeds to. The other, uh, the other obstacle to moral engagement is egoism. Egoism is claiming that, well, everything that I do, I do it in my self-interest, right? So, ethical egoism, uh, egoism here would say that, Now, is this true? Because if everything I do, and I do, I do it in my self-interest, that would mean, well, that there is no moral domain out there for me to uh, discuss, know, find out, and uh, decide on the course of action. My actions are just a result of my course of, uh, my, my, uh, the way I would like to act, my whims and fancies. So, if you are an egoist, now the, ego, the term egoism should not be confused with egotism or the commonly cited problem, uh, the eye trouble, uh, commonly cited problem known as eye trouble, where people tend to use too much of the uh, letter I to uh, denote themselves. Now, coming back to uh, egoism on the other hand is a philosophical theory, which claims that each one of us acts only in one's own interest. Now, there are two versions of uh, egoism, they are psychological egoism and ethical egoism. Psychological egoism is a descriptive theory, that is, it is describing behavior, uh, human behavior, and it is claiming that, well, we should do what is in our, our the eth uh, psychological egoism describes that human beings do what is in their self-interest. Ethical egoist, on the other hand, would say human beings ought to do what is in their self-interest. So, the truth or falsity of, uh, the truth of psychological egoism makes ethical egoism an, uh, 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 almost an obvious truth and uh, denial of ethical egoism brings it the other way around. Now, let us see. If I say that everything I do, I do it in my self-interest. Now, if this is the claim that an egoist is making, I do not see any how to engage with him in a moral debate. Rather, I would like to ask him or her that, is there anything that you can do which is not in your self-interest? Now, let me bring you to, uh, uh, let me bring you to the point that, what is the problem that the ethical egoist suffers from? The ethical egoist is claiming that, well, uh, whatever I do, I do it, uh, I, uh, it is in my self-interest. So, uh, all my, uh, all my targets, all my uh, work is for uh, the execution of my desires. Now, I would ask the, ethic, uh, the egoist that, is there anything that he can do, which is not desired by him? Let me write it on the board to make it clear. Now, the uh, problem of the egoist is understood by understanding the ambiguousness of the term self-interest. If self-interest means something that is desired by me or that gives me satisfaction, well, we cannot conceive of a human action that is not in self-interest, because whenever we see, whatever we act on, it is definitely for, a, uh, for one's own satisfaction. Now, if that uh, interpretation of self-interest is broadened so much, that satisfaction also means self-interest, then there is no possible human action, which is not in self-interest. And thereby, uh, everyone is an egoist, and thereby, uh, there is no possibility of doing a uh, non-self-interest action. But this is where the problem is. Now, Mother Teresa has uh, sacrificed her, uh, the luxuries of her life to 
um, help the downtrodden. Now, she definitely gained satisfaction out of it, that is why she did it. Now, could this be called self-interest? Because if self-interest is to mean that, well, whatever we do is that that gives us satisfaction, well, then everything that we do is in self-interest. So, it is us uh, calling every action as actions of self-interest. So, here is where the difficulty with egoism lies, the broadness of the uh, interpretation of the term self-interest. If everything that is done is for self-interest, then self-interest is simply incorporates all that we do and thereby there is no possibility and it is trivially true that all actions are self-interested actions. But in reality, perhaps it is not so. If you, uh, there is a difference between an action which is benefiting one and an action which is uh, causing harm to one, uh, but benefiting the other. Now, both the actions might give us satisfaction, but self-interest uh, is served in the first and not served in the second. So, we can see that self-interest is only, uh, if understood in its uh, sharp, rigid sense, will uh, have actions which are not in self-interest. But self-interest expanded or interpreted as any action that gives us satisfaction, then well, there are no actions which are not out of self-interest. So, these are uh, two most common uh, problems or obstacles that we face before a moral engagement. And in this brief few uh, minutes, I have tried to explain that why these two do not stand aground. So, with this, uh, we would like to proceed to our next course of uh, a syllabus, which is uh, consequentialism. Okay.